Hi, my name is Andrew McLaren. Today we're going to talk about Discord and why you need to get your children and your students off of this platform. It is just so much worse than anything else. Um, it is kind of like Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook kind of like social media concerns, but there's other aspects to this that make it a whole lot worse. And it has to do with basically who else is on there and that what they're doing purposefully on this platform um, and why it's so bad with some structural problems with Discord and what we can really do about this um, to really help these people who are trying to get access to children um, and brainwash them, to be honest, um, what we can really do about that as a society and as a country. Um, and I want to talk about some relevant articles that show that this is really not just my opinion, but this is an ongoing issue that a lot of people are aware about they're also misinformed about and think one thing and they don't actually go on the platform. So they don't really know what's going on. Um, so in addition to showing you these articles, I actually want to go on to a discord, just one of the public ones for like a little kids game and show you just how bad even like the safest discords can be. And then try and show you how to report something. Okay. So the question about what discord is, is that it's an application kind of like a game um, where they have their own servers, it's all encrypted and um, you can open and send messages to your friends with their information. So if you have that person's information, you can talk to them um, either via like a chat that you've typed out or that you can talk to through their voice supports. Um, you can also even screen share. They've turned this into like basically like a Google Meets kind of thing. But it originally was used by people who played video games who wanted to talk to each other, but they didn't want to use the um, the platform's in-game chat for maybe performance reasons where like, oh, well, this is doesn't um, have good voice quality or something like that, or it doesn't respond quickly enough. Um, but largely what I've seen over years is that this is people who want to circumvent the rules for the in-game chat. So they'll put like rules in the chat to say like, no using hate speech, no using particular words. Um, or maybe even no swearing, right? And so they'll have these certain rules that the platform puts in to prevent um, issues between people. And so people have gone onto Discord to circumvent that and continue to harass and bully people um, just like they want to. And so students use this to send messages like AOL, but it has this history and this context of it being used to send things that they really know that they shouldn't be sending on other platforms. And Discord is okay with them doing this. And this is a huge structural problem with Discord because um, this type of history has led it to basically not crack down on these people who are doing that type of behavior and have a terrible, terrible system of terms of service, first of all, and never actually enforcing the rules on those terms of service. So I've already talked about how Discord's history leads to kind of like some cultural problems. Um, but then there's also an element of it structurally having some huge issues like the private chat rooms. The fact that these are not like searchable on the web means that, um, you know, you and I can't go find these instances of hate speech. Uh, it has to be done kind of internally by the people in that chat or by Discord. And Discord, the larger structure, does not want to moderate directly anyone. They want everyone to be reporting issues that they're having in their community, which then Discord deals with, which is a terrible structure because people don't want to be moderated. And so they don't want to moderate each other. They're not going to invite people who are going to be wanting moderation. And they're just not going to have anyone looking at anything that they're saying which leads to huge problems where people will use Discord to plan attacks, like terrorist attacks. There's been a number of mass shooters where this has happened, or they've talked to people about wanting to do things violently on Discord and nothing has been happened or tracked or done anything with. Um, and the company's not looking into tracking any of that information as far as I'm aware, and they're not publicly doing so. Now, I think they might be privately going into it given um, the eyes that have been on them. <laughs> But like, this this is something we need to shut down. We need people to be reporting when the, there's um, people making jokes about killing people because those jokes sometimes aren't jokes. But we've turned generally into um, this culture of oh well that was just a joke. That's just how we talk in this chat. These types of chats and it's okay type of behavior. 
we're normal. It's normal. So we're not going to raise any alarms when we see it. So alt-right organizations have also used this to target youths. There's tons of articles about this. It is a coordinated effort. A lot of people are just kind of doing it on their own free time, but there's a purposeful effort to get on with youths, um, tell them like propaganda essentially and lies and um, make, get them used to hating certain groups or thinking along certain ways. Um, they start very innocuous. They'll start with like, oh, that kid's annoying because they're black like at elementary school. And then before you know it, um, that person's a criminal because they're black. And before you know it, oh, we should do something about these criminals. Um, like it's, it's crazy how quickly it can go from that, but also how they present it in this layered fashion to children to get them used to these ideas. Um, in addition to all of that, the report function is incredibly difficult to actually use. I'll show you that at the end of the video um, so that you can actually go through this with your kid and report some of these things that need to be reported with them um, and go into their discords and search these things because you can totally search them um, as the user to report. And I highly recommend all parents do this with their kids. Um, they need to know that we're, we're aware that this stuff's going on and that we're not okay about, with it. And well, if you can't be trusted with the space to use it appropriately, then we can't trust you guys. We can't give this space to kids is largely how I see this. So this report function is just impossible. And Discord could make this super easy, like Facebook, Instagram, all these others. It's just like click on the message, report it, not on Discord, um, which has led to a ton of people raiding where they'll send a message and then delete it. And even if you're moderating the, spe the space, you can't find the message, so you can't report the person. So that person will never get banned from the larger Discord platform. Um, even if they were to, they probably would just make another account, but there's some stuff with um, phone numbers and whatnot, where there's account ver verifications. So be very careful about also what you read about them fixing some of these issues, because there's tons of articles saying that they're doing better, but they're not. And I'll go into that or they're not, maybe they're doing better, but they're not doing what they're saying they're doing. So when I talk to a lot of adults, they'll ask me, well, who are my kids talking to on discord? Like who else is on this? And there's a fair amount of adults who game. That's kind of like, um, a significant portion as well as minors. I think minors are really like the bread and butter. That's like the main population in general. Most people who are gamers that I've talked to are on discord or have a discord. There's some people who don't play video games and they might have some servers. There are things for like anime or for like, um, particular TV shows or, or that kind of stuff. Um, it's kind of like a club, right? Anything that you'd normally have a club for, you can probably find a discord for, uh, but it is largely, <laughs> um, for gamers. And there's some people who don't identify as gamers, um, who play games. And that's largely because gamers have, um, just like discord accepted hate speech as kind of a part of how they are and how they act. And it's really hard to get that to change. Um, in addition to people who identify as gamers who just kind of like inappropriate humor, um, there's people who are purposefully trying to uh, radicalize or recruit youth and trying to get them to think more racist thoughts, right? And there are also minors who have various levels of acting inappropriately. And this space is viewed as a space where you can act inappropriately and you should really, because that's culturally how people act on discord. So just kind of be aware that most people are acting kind of inappropriately in general in, in most of these groups. Um, not everyone is, but it's pretty, pretty homogenous in that regard. So the question is, what can we really do about this? And the first thing is raise awareness. So people realize just how bad the kids are acting on this platform and you need to get on that platform and you need to show all the other adults what their kids are doing on the, that platform as well. Um, and there needs to be some sort of natural consequences for those who are violating, um, like norms and doing hate speech and allowing kids to act this way. So if there are parents who are letting their kids on this platform, they're not going to watch my kids. I'm just saying that. 
Um, and you may want to consider having some of those social consequences where it's like, hey, if so-and-so's parent is, I don't know, doing drugs or something at that house, you would never let your kid go over there. Um, just like that, you wouldn't want your kid to be um, put in an environment that's bad for them. You shouldn't be letting your kids go over to the house where they're playing games that you're not okay with and they're talking online with people that you don't know. It's very, very strange to me how we've generally allowed strangers to talk to our kids. And there's a lot of games that have started to get rid of the chat function entirely. And you need to work on getting your kids um, to work against that and say, hey, chat in games is bad. It always leads to issues. Um, and if they're doing this type of stuff on school devices, they lose access to it, just like anything else that's inappropriate at school. Um, we need to make sure that we're not creating um, risk for them and other people. And if they can't be trusted to stay off Discord and not be on the bullying platform, then they can't be using devices at school. Tech departments cannot be let off the hook with this. You got to make sure they're held accountable. And if kids are circumventing this, then that tech department needs to figure out how to stop that. I've worked as a teacher doing all kinds of like investigative work um, with kids on the inside, <laughs> trying to figure out what they're doing and how they're doing it, and then telling the tech department. And they, they squashed like three or four different methods in like six months when I was working at this one school in particular. It was pretty interesting how much they could solve the problem if they knew what it was, but nobody was really thinking of this as a priority. Um, and so we, we also need to recognize that many people in the tech department themselves may be gamers who use Discord. They may think it's totally fine. They may even think that it's totally a good thing. Then they also might themselves be radicalized and think this type of humor is acceptable. Um, some people have even gotten school licenses of Discord. I think they've changed that recently. Uh, I was looking into it that you can make a school account and find other people in your school using your school email, but it's no longer managed by the schools. It had been previously, but I think they stopped doing that because they kept on having issues of bullying and harassment with their student bodies going on to Discord. There's better platforms for this that are far safer, and we actually can keep track of the messages being sent. So use them, not Discord. So here are a couple articles that I've just been aware of over the years. I've read all of these, but it's been a couple years. Um, you can see that some of this is, goes back as far as 2017. People have been aware of this issue even longer, but this is when people started really writing about it and talking about it. And um, Discord has been aware of this issue. And basically you can see how they use this thing to like talk to each other before they go to these rallies, um, coordinate what they're gonna do and what, what they're gonna bring. Um, and then there's also like, I've seen things where like some of the people who've actually like gone on these terrorist attacks and killed people, uh, used, uh, let's see, where's discord in here? Yep. They use it. This, the stormers have a private chat room. So there's like a particular hate groups that have servers. Um, and Discord has gone after those ones and kind of shut down some of the more explicitly racist ones. But I was still able to find um, Discords that were like dedicated to racism, like with racist names that I'm not even going to um, repeat. But like it may not be one of these like the Stormers, but it might be something with a hate speech word in its title, which is like, come on, Discord, that's like a word in a title. You can auto catch that. There's a way to do this. I think they have started to do that because some of that stuff's been harder for me to find that I had been previously finding. And um, unfortunate reality is that whenever you have these like online spaces, you can have a lot of people with radical views that tell each other, hey, that's normal, and find other people like themselves and encourage each other, brainstorm on how to actually attack um, and it's, it's pretty crazy, honestly, how many of these things have existed and how long it took for them to actually crack down on this stuff. Um, it's just absolutely nuts. 
but then you can also see like oh this is this is very very if you're like hey, i don't know if my kid's gonna go on a racist discord if they're on a gaming one they're on a racist discord almost certainly uh this is a good example of roblox and how roblox communities were used to radicalize children where they basically had them role play as like romans and like subjugate the locals to like torture and demonizing as like hazing essentially um but then they would talk to kaiser who was the leader and um there was some very strange behavior and jokes that they would make and like role plays and roles that they would have in there um very strange stuff very good read to see what they're doing with kids and like kind of seemingly innocent environments with like oh it's romans right they're having fun with the romans they're dressing up and doing the pillars and stuff but no like they were um like doing classes of society and like classism and like essentially killing the people that they don't like in in the space and doing other weird behavior um and getting them to talk to each other in nasty ways to rank up in in their role-playing world um and then you can see that here's another article this is a little bit more uh a little bit more recently um it's like 2021 right they're like oh we're 2017 they were putting out things like oh we're working on it and they're definitely still not fixing it and um this is actually yeah, this is 2019, um, but it's talking about how like people are actually recruiting teenagers. So you might want to read this if you're curious about more about how they're specifically going to get those kids to be um, thinking in certain ways. So yeah, there's tons and tons of articles on Discord. None of them are good. They're all bad. <laughs> we really need to hold them more accountable. Instead of writing these articles, we need to actually start holding like lawmakers accountable say hey we got to have some laws written we gotta have some moderation for discord because they won't moderate themselves um so this has been an ongoing issue maybe it's gone a little bit better but it's not good enough we're still getting people using this for these types of stuff so if you want to search a discord um first of all you need to be signed into it so you can get onto discord using a browser and you can download this it is something that's going to be on on your device it's like an application it's not like a website or a url um, you can open it in your browser and that is something that's doable um, so you could use like just the internet to get access to a discord um, but you can't really use it to search for them but when you're on this uh you can I've, I've created like a brand new account it doesn't have access to anything or anyone or know anyone if I had a friend, I could search in their username and then do like direct messages with them. Um, and then there's also like all of your online friends and a couple of bits of information that you can kind of see around here. But the main thing that most people use are like servers over here. And you would need to um, join a server. And that usually is kind of an invite code that they'll send to you. Um, or if you're like, a really little kid and you don't know anyone you're very likely to go on to these public servers and this, these are terrible terrible places um because i've gone to a couple of them and like the little kid ones i've seen tons of inappropriate behavior and stuff that you would not be okay with um in general a discord should land you on their rules page they'll give you a list of rules that you have to follow such as like no hate speech um and then basically you can get on there and see what other people are sending to each other. Um, there might be a couple things like frequently asked questions. Um, and then if you scroll down here, there's like little, um, these are announcements that have got a different symbol, um, but they've got these like hashtag symbols and each one of these is a place that people can type in and spoke, speak to each other. Um, so it's like all these different discussion topics, right? And a lot of this stuff is probably innocuous, like 99% of it's probably totally fine. Um, I think there's also, this one doesn't really look like it has it, but there is also voice 
um, chat spaces that you can have in here. Um, maybe I'll find one with that. But let's just show you how to search one of these things. Um, so if you wanted to find like an inappropriate word, you just go up to that upper right hand corner, you search and it should search um, for that word in the the server that you're in. So we're like in the Minecraft one and it's going to show um, like whenever this is whenever this is used. So you can see like already here, like eh, that's kind of like maybe some of these people are just kind of being crude. They're not being mean. You know, some people might argue that, but like this is just totally not OK. Um, some people might use it as like lyrics, but like there's a lot of memes that they'll use they're pretty sexist a lot of images um this guy that youtuber is just completely inappropriate if you know who he is so like they're talking about inappropriate people they're basically telling other kids hey go check out this really cool youtuber and then they go check them out and they get normalized with how that person talks and it's it's pretty bad right so you want to be kind of careful about some of this stuff um i can guarantee you that most people's parents are not okay with this type of language that's being used just like this level of stuff on a minecraft so if this is on minecraft just imagine what's on on some of the ones aimed at older people right so please search through your kids uh, various um servers there's probably other ones like apex legends oh man i don't even want to search that because like I know that there's a lot of teenagers that play that. Okay, yeah, this is what the, the voice chat looks like. All these people are in a, a voice chat room. I'm not going to join it because I don't want to talk to them or hear what they're going to say. But we could just do a quick search. And there's so many results, it's having a hard time pulling them all up. Yep, totally. Yep, I'm sure that plenty of... Uh, Plenty of people would not be happy with their kids seeing stuff like that. Um, and it gets a lot more explicit. I just kind of don't want to search for those words on YouTube, but you definitely can just put in like any hate speech term. It's probably going to come up in one of these larger ones um, and check how your kids are talking to each other um, in their own private ones as well. OK. Oh, man, I almost completely forgot this. This is how you report these. So if you want to report a message, um, you need to click on the message more, get the message link. Um, you can also get the individual's like account um, profile and get the profile information, I believe, on here somewhere. But like that person could just delete that message and I wouldn't be able to copy the link. Even if I was a moderator, these things just straight up disappear. Then if you want to report on Discord, um, it's really ridiculous. Like the, the first thing that comes up isn't even from Discord. They have such terrible um, report systems on here that other people have had to write tutorials for them. Um, and basically, you get this message link. Then you copy it into your clipboard or control C or whatever. And then um, you need to put it in your report. And then so where is the report in here? Did I miss it? Where is it? So now that we've got this, we go to this page. TIS, OK. <laughs> and you go to trust and safety. It has to be trust and safety. Um, and then you give them your email. You tell them, like, oh, this is what the issue's about. Um, and then. You can then say, hey, this is in you know either server I don't own or moderate. And then you can get the message link, which isn't even what they call it, I don't believe. Um, on, on Discord, it was like, yeah. In any case, we do have the code for the message. You can also tell them about it, and you can attach a file. So you can do a screenshot. Um, it's not really going to be of much use if they can't get the actual code though so make sure you get that code or else they're not going to do anything about it and nine out of ten times they don't do anything about it anyways the person's account isn't deleted um i've been targeted by multiple people on discord 
and their accounts are totally fine years later and after like five or six different reports of like substantiated hate speech being used targeting me and it's just it's crazy they don't care about the behavior in general it takes a whole lot to get a server shut down and it's um surprising also for individuals how much they can get away with without being taken off the platform thank you for mclearning with me before you go please check out the following services that i offer with my business so if you click the link in my videos this goes to my website i might be changing it from podia because i'm no longer doing the interactive videos for sale i might put those up for free um, but most of my other services are linked here so you can see that i've got like a teachers paid teachers and a wise ant um, the Teachers Pay Teachers has a lot of my assessments that I have for like the NGSS as well as lessons that I made when I was actually a teacher in the classroom. So I've got quite a few things like CERs and other things on there. Um, if you want to get one-on-one -on -one live support from me, either like with science or like working on um, like teaching support lessons and that kind of stuff, uh, you can sign up through Wiseant. I have a link to there where you can contact me there. Um, and we can schedule hourly appointments. Um, and I've got a few other things on here, like a Facebook page um, and our social media. And if you're interested in getting professional development with me for like a team of teachers, a whole page with information on that. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, thank you.